morning everybody this is sangeeta saxena editor aviation and defense universe getting you live on the 57 years since we had the india pakistan war in the year 1965 and who better to trace this war for us and to tell us how is it different from now to when it happened it has the have the forces changed has there been a change in the indian army is there a change in the strategy we have just the right person with us uh, welcome general bhatia we have with us general vinod bhatia former dgmo former dg infantry a person who knows it all and who better than him to tell us sir we like to begin with 57 years hence where do we start uh, thank you firstly uh, privilege honor to be on the edu platform as one person especially with you as a uh, editor Yeah, where do we stand? It's a very important question. Actually, where we celebrate 57 years of a victory against in the 1965 war, uh, things have changed and things remain the same. What remains the same is the combat effectiveness of Indian armed forces. Uh, we have been through fire. We have been through a number of uh, ch- security challenges. They have increased. Uh, in 1965, was a war which changed everything. Well, after 1962, we have to understand the backdrop of 1962 war. Uh, 62 was a debacle, as military debacle, political debacle, debacle, strategic debacle. It was a, we were a nation which was uh, uh, on the back foot. Uh, and in 63, 64, Pakistan was equipped by 2.3 billion dollars of the military grant by the U.S. Army. So 65 war, we were fighting against a technologically better armed forces in Pakistan, uh, who were equipped with the pattern, the latest technologies of uh, F-86, the Star Fighters. And uh, we had just started upgrading from 62 war. We started raising, and we were 70 thousand strong army. Uh, so I think uh, what changed was the confidence after 62, and since 65 onwards, uh, it was 67, uh, 71. Uh, it was uh, thereafter, you know, the various incidents in the northeast. Uh, we had Sri Lanka, we had Maldives, and of course, Jammu and Kashmir. Then the Kargil war. Uh, and then the LSE deployment. I think we have done exceedingly well. Uh, the base I would put it as 1965. It was because of that that we took off. Right, sir. And uh, what is the difference between the forces we had then and the forces we have now? Uh, forces in the sense, you know, uh, in 1965, I may put it very bluntly, uh, we were uh, disjointed arm, armed forces. Right. So uh, we had a naval arm, we had a uh, air, air arm, and we had the army. Uh, but today we are more joint, and uh, we are a force that time. Today, India needs a military power, and I think we are graduating to a military power. We are not a military power yet, uh, but yes, we are moving towards becoming a military power, and is in this in concert with India's uh, position in the world order. Uh, we are in 1965. We were a developing nation. Uh, we were poor. Our economy was not uh, was not able to support our armed forces. We had competing priorities. Uh, we had food shortages. Uh, we had shortages at every level. Uh, we we all grew up in that uh, period of shortages, but today uh, we are an economic power, we are a military power, we are a political power, and we are a diplomatic power. Uh, so that is what has changed, I think. And uh, the army today has uh, been tasked uh, in multifarious uh, activities and domains. We we have lived up to the expectations of the nation and the people and the society. Uh, we have been respected. We have been respected at that time, but. The major change here comes what I think uh, is two. One is the social economic factors uh, of our soldiers and leaders, and the second, uh, I think everything which the armed forces do today, uh, because of the information domain and uh, you know platforms like ADU, even tactical actions have strategic implications. Now, whether it's on the land of control or the land of action control, a small uh, tactical action like Galwan was tactical action basically. It's a lot of a few hundred men. They've some of the tact tactical action. Twenty uh, odd men, but it has strategic implications. So that was not since 1965. Uh, 1965 was basically operational uh, and tactical. So strategic implications were there definitely, but that was of the war. But today it is not so. So we have to be very careful. Our leaders, especially junior leaders, have to be very careful. A human rights violation, uh, a firing on the LC, a beheading on the LC by Pakistan, uh, a, a scuffle on the LEC. Uh, so this was strategic implications. So that I think has changed. The sensitivities have changed. Strategic sensitivities have changed. And strategic interests too have changed to a large extent. Right, sir. And sir, uh, when you talk of changes at our front, we also would like to understand from an expert like you, what are the changes you are observing in the adversary? 
No, adversaries, uh, uh, we must firstly respect our adversaries. Uh, most of us, you know, try to not respect. Adversaries should respect it because if you don't respect your adversary, you go very, very wrong. Uh, as, as for China is concerned, uh, China, I would put it uh, as uh, the continent national power in five times like that. Let's face facts. So, uh, technologically, the armed forces are better. There's no doubt about it. Uh, later said the armed forces are better. But what they lack is, uh, you know, combat experience. Uh, what they lack is battle heart, especially for hydrogen warfare. And that is where, where we have the edge. We have a very motivated army. We live in Nam uh, We have armed forces which are now, uh, I, I must say, quite joint now. Well, we should not even talk too much. We have a CDS. We had a CDS. We have a DNA. Things are going in the right direction. So as a channel is concerned, we can take them on uh, on uh, on relative sense uh, along and the LAC and in the oceans. Air Force also we have some strength. As a Pakistan is concerned, Pakistan is a mischievous nation. So you know, they, they would always try to do something. Uh, but what has changed with Pakistan is, uh, you know, if you take Ori and thereafter Pulwama, and thereafter you take the uh, precision air sign Jabarta. I should not be saying it loud, but after the uh, Pulwama, and the retaliation in Jabata, the preemptive strike in Jabata, there is no major terrorist incident. Okay. There is no high visibility, high profile terrorist incidents. So 2019 February onwards, you don't find that. But, but it's a caution because on 14th of February 2019, I was speaking at NHG seminar on counter terrorism, and I said after Uri, it's not been there, and it happened the same day. So I hope I'm right and I'm not wrong again. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what we have put a caution on Pakistan. So with Pakistan, the challenge lies in changing Pakistan behavior in the middle long term. Whereas in China, we need to deter China's aggressive behavior and China's containment of India. Uh, so the armed forces will have to play the front post, front part of it because uh, if the armed forces are weak, uh, we cannot hold on to the defense of the LAC. The diplomatic, political, economic initiatives don't mean anything. Right? So that is where the army has changed. We'll have to optimize their competing criteria budget for the budget. We have to optimize the budget mm -hmm. and the main thing is that we would, after 65 what happened was because the US supported Pakistan, we had to look at Soviet Union at that point. And Soviet Union must say was a level part. In 71 war, also 11th of December uh, 1971 when the USS Enterprise was heading towards Chittagong, it was the Soviet Union uh, who, who actually directed uh, American move towards Chittagong. Uh, so uh, we have to understand that and today our 60% of equipment is uh, existing. Uh, having said that, let me also say that Indian soldiers, sailors, air warriors, uh, they optimize everything. If you look at our military hardware, uh, we got Soviet equipment, we got American equipment, we got Swedish equipment, we got Israeli equipment, we got French equipment. Right? And we have optimized it. Uh, we have uh, exploited it. I would say we have gone beyond optimized to exploitation. So that is the armed forces of today. So there is a defense after 1965 when we are fighting with barest minimum military hardware and we did well there. To now when the challenges for the new age warfare are different and we are prepared, we are a future ready force, I must say that. And so this uh, change in the pattern of procurement which is very, very evident with the two drives of the government, Atma Nirbhar Bharat and Make in India. Uh, do you think it makes us self-sufficient or is it a very long way towards self-sufficient? Hey, I, I think we have started the right. We have to be self-sufficient. We have to have our network, uh, at least the defense industry, self-sufficient manufacturing. And we are moving towards it. But that does not mean that everything will come uh, from within us. It doesn't mean that. You know, we, we have to cut in, after cutting in technology that they have, we have a late mover uh, advantage. Uh, we should exploit that. Uh, we have uh, new technologies to be exploited, AI to be integrated. So I think we are doing that. Uh, a little late, but there are those time. Uh, I think we are doing that. But it needs more funds, it needs more R&D, it needs more focus, focus, and it needs more often you know, We have to, we have to uh, uh, you know, our self-belief is required. Mm -hmm. And we need an excellent partnership uh, between the private and public industry. If we don't do that, uh, I think that it, it, it uh, will not be a good thing. So the public-private partnership in R&D, in uh, defense production has to be there and there has to be a trust. You know, we have to understand that the private industry uh, functions on the balance sheet. We have to understand that. So if the balance sheet at the end of the year is not in blue, uh, then we are asking for, uh, you know, uh, right. the, the support will not be there. So we have to encourage that, hand-holding, uh, with funds is there, we have to be magnanimous. 
and let us not look at high-end equipment all of a sudden. Let's upgrade it to Mark One market. That's what's happening. That is why we have the index and uh, we have the ADB and others. So well, I think we are doing uh, enough. Uh, however, we need to change. Uh, we need to change our procedure and processes uh, and keep with the policy changes. So that is a must. Very interesting. Sir, uh, you know, one very major difference which we will see from uh, 1965 to warfare, if it happens in the current times, will be the application and use of unmanned systems. So, how do you think it's an upper edge? Who has the better unmanned systems has the upper edge? Is that the policy, uh, military strategy in the current uh, scenario, sir? Uh, of late, we have learned a lot of lessons from many then Russia, Ukraine. Uh, uh, robotics and un unmanned systems uh, are the future, there is no doubt about it. But in the end, it will always the soldier will you know, win the battle for you. Uh, because unmanned systems also are manned by soldiers. Uh, so uh, I, I feel that uh, we are progressing unmanned systems uh, in a big way. We are going for small drones, uh, drone technology, uh, robotics, uh, remote controlled uh, vehicles, and other things. Uh, I do feel that uh, we should develop it on our own. We have the right industry. And if we bank on uh, you know, uh, outside technology, we will not get the best. We will not definitely not get the best. And we will not get the quantities we want because the cost will be high. And unmanned systems are costly. So we have to understand that the unmanned systems need different unmanned systems at the tactical level, at the operational level. And also we have to uh, have the right mix between unmanned systems and uh, AI and cyber warfare, uh, space warfare. So how do we, it, it is not just the unmanned systems at the tactical level, operational level. Uh, uh, cyber will be very important. Information domain is, I think, the most important today. If you look at the shelf and war, uh, honestly, I'm a confused man. I don't know what actually happening out there. I read the Ukraine viewpoint, the West viewpoint. I read the Russian viewpoint. Uh, if you look at the Russian television, 9, 9 to 9.30, 9 they call the Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. It gives a different picture altogether. So uh, information domain, uh, again, so we, we, you know, uh, there are bots. Today. So, uh, uh, and that is the information domain very important. So, we have to look at unmanned systems not only in the war fighting domain, uh, but in the overall in the multi domain uh, warfare. And, sir, so when we talk of information management, what, what do you feel is the role of perception management of these forces? Because uh, that's a very major exercise which we've been seeing nowadays, both on the geopolitical front where public policy is concerned, also in the military front. Yeah, I think uh, you know we are looking at perception management uh, 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 is the battle winning factor. Now. You can lose a battle win the war. And the example of this I will give is the 2019 Prince Air Second talk. We won the battle but lost the war. Then let's look inwards. Let's not be yeah. no. We did very well in the uh, uh, in executing the Prince strikes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the information domain, uh, I think Pakistan just. And today we, we ourselves we call it Banakur. Don't talk to Jabatom. No, Banakur is 20 kilometers away from Jabatom. At precision air strikes mean plus minus few meters. Right. So haven't we lost the battle there? The war there, perception management. They, they perceive that they won the war. They did not win the war. De definitely not. Uh, I, I have married 25 days and the swift retort took place out there. It is the most heavily manned uh, sector along the LC, along yes. the borders. Yes. And they flew over bombarded the air with this thing and didn't cause a single casualty. Is that possible? Yeah. So I am just giving an example of perception management. I think perception management is uh, very important. Uh, and only we had we had the upper hand. Uh, so uh, we we have to have and the and, and we have a uh, uh, we have a uh, deputy chief now looking after it. So I think we are right. Thank you very much sir. It was just wonderful speaking with you. And I think you know, it really gives us a thought that when we relive these days, we always feel that, you know, history changes, geopolitical situations change. But, you know, somewhere down the lane, the soldier is the same. And we still have the best of morale. We have the best of the soldier. Our men are the best in the forces. And I think, you know, now if a situation like this arises, well, the result will always be the same. We won, then we will win now. I think you summed it up. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I salute Thank the you. soldiers and I salute all the uh, soldiers, sailors, and their warriors who made the supreme sacrifice in 1965 war and will continue to defend the nation. Thank you very much and thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.